one is potassium. Bunsen wondered whether every element might have a unique colour signature. And so he and Kirchhoff set to work. Kirchhoff knew that when white light is shone through a prism, it gets split up into all its spectral colours. All the colours of the rainbow, from red through yellow to blue and violet. And he came up with this. It's called a spectroscope. It has a prism in the middle with two telescopes on either side. Bunsen and Kirchhoff then worked together to analyse different materials using their new piece of kit. So they took a compound containing sodium, and if I heat it up in the Bunsen burner, the light from the sodium passes through the first telescope and gets split up by the prism into its spectral lines. They then pass through the second telescope, and if I have a look, yep, I can see the two orange lines, which are the unique spectrum of sodium. No other element would give that pattern. Using this technique, they actually discovered two new elements, silvery gold cesium and rubidium so named because of the ruby-red colour of its spectrum. It was this same technique that was used to test whether Mendeleev's prediction of gaps was right. He described in meticulous detail an unknown element that followed aluminium in his periodic table. He predicted it would be a silvery metal with atomic weight 68. Then, in 1875, a French chemist used a spectroscope to identify just such an element, gallium. Gallium is a beautiful silvery white metal and it's relatively soft. Although Mendeleev predicted its existence, it was actually found by Parisian chemist Paul-Emile Lecoq de Boisbaudron. Gallium has a very low melting point, and with a boiling point of 2,204 degrees centigrade, it's liquid over a wider range of temperatures than any other known substance. Gallium is used to make semiconductors. It's found in light-emitting diodes, LEDs. One of gallium's compounds was shown to be effective in attacking drug-resistant strains of malaria. But even though Mendeleev had left gaps for gallium and other elements, his table was not complete. There was one group that eluded him completely, an entirely new family of elements. The story of their discovery began with an otherworldly search for an extraterrestrial element. In August 1868, a total eclipse of the sun in India was the moment that French astronomer Pierre Janssen had been waiting for. He knew that it was possible to use a spectroscope to identify some elements in the light of the sun, but the intensity of sunlight meant that many elements were hidden. Janssen hoped to see more during a total eclipse when the sun was less blinding. As Janssen studied the eclipse, he discovered a colour signature never seen before. He was faced with an unknown element. The same spectral line was confirmed by another astronomer, Norman Lockyer. He named it Helium, after the Greek sun god, because he thought that it could only exist on the sun. Enter Scottish chemist William Ramsey who linked extraterrestrial helium to Earth. Ramsey experimented with a radioactive rock called
called clavite. By dissolving the rock in acid, he collected a gas with an atomic weight of four and the same spectral signature that Lockyer had seen, helium. Helium is the second most abundant element in the universe after hydrogen. It was one of the elements produced just after the Big Bang. Liquid helium is used to cool superconducting magnets for MRI scanners. Deep sea divers rely on helium to counter the narcotic effects on the brain of increased nitrogen absorption. And it was a vital ingredient in the space race, used to cool hydrogen and oxygen for rocket engines. Before he discovered helium on Earth, William Ramsey had already separated a new gas from the air, argon, with an atomic weight of 40. Now Ramsey faced a puzzle. He realized that the new elements didn't fit the periodic table and suggested there must be a missing group. So his search began. He found three more gases, which he named neon, Greek for new, krypton, meaning hidden, and xenon, stranger. The group became known as the noble gases because they were unreactive and seemed so aloof. This family of gases completed the rows on the periodic table. Now, Mendeleev may not have known about these elusive elements, but he'd established the idea of elemental relationships, and so he made sure that there was a place on his table for every new element, no matter when it was discovered. The periodic table is a classic example of the scientific method at work. From a mass of data, Mendeleev found a pattern. It led him to make predictions that could be tested by future experiments, pointing the way for 20th century scientists to prove him and his theory right. By the time he died at the age of 72, he was a hero in Russia and a superhero in the world of science. His periodic table was immortalized in stone here in the center of St. Petersburg. And he eventually had an element named after him, Mendeleevium, as well as a crater, the Mendeleev crater on the dark side of the moon. Fitting tributes to a man who came from the Siberian wastelands to become the ultimate cartographer of the elements. The periodic table had finally created order out of chaos, but it tells us nothing about why our world is as it is, why some elements are energetic, others are slow, some inert, others volatile. It will be another 40 years before an entirely different branch of science came up with an answer. In 1909, Ernest Rutherford looked inside the atom for the first time. Rutherford proposed that the structure of the atom was like a miniature solar system, an overwhelmingly empty space with a few tiny electrons orbiting randomly around a dense, positively charged nucleus. But it wasn't until Niels Bohr came along, one-time goalkeeper for the Danish football squad and future Nobel Prize-winning physicist, that things really kicked off. He suggested that the electrons orbited around the nucleus in fixed shells. And it was his idea that was to lead to the discovery that these shells could only accommodate a set number of electrons. Imagine this football pitch is an atom, a single atom of an element. This is the nucleus. 
if this nucleus were to scale, my 